Hi, y'all. Welcome to an episode of BOMA Greater Dallas Unplugged. Earlier this week, we hosted our annual golf tournament at Brookhaven Country Club. That's, you know, where Jordan Spieth grew up. The day could not have been any better. Yes, it started out a little chilly, but it warmed up. I will say wearing the mask really helped me stay warm. The networking committee did such a great job in putting this event together. I'm not the best of golfers, but I still had a lot of fun getting to know my teammates even more. We get to see other people at the holes and then talk with them. For anyone that's reluctant about golfing in our tournament, don't be. The fun in the game is just the camaraderie. I learned that from the get-go. I hate to admit this, but I've been golfing since I was in third grade. Still not very good, but it really, the golf is about making great memories. I have a lot of great memories of golfing with my dad, who taught me the rules and the respect of the game. And I have lots of memories with my grandparents and my cousin playing golf with them as they taught me how to love the game and how it can be, how it can bring people together. And then there's also the memories of hanging out with my neighborhood friends and we would, our parents would just drop us off at the club, we'd go play nine holes and then we'd go swim afterwards. It was, it was such fun. I love doing all that. It's just, I have a lot of fond memories around this sport. And like I said, I'm hoping to pass it along to my boys and because it will be our family sport for sure that we can keep doing forever and ever until I can never swing a club anymore. But we all just have to remember that we're not perfect unless you're Steve Broom or John Rimza, and then you can, you can play in those amateur tournaments. Well, we had a great group of people show up on Monday, and I'd like to congratulate our winners for the tournament. And this year, we took the top score from each group. These are the winners for each group or flight. Flight one was Elko, flight two was the Steam Team, Flight 3, Alpha Glass, and Flight 4, Fuji Tech. The winner of the women's longest drive was my teammate, Jamie Vaughn. The winner of the men's longest drive was Mr. Edward Mills. Winner of the women's closest to the pin was Sally Schottmeyer. And lastly, the winner of the men's closest to the pin was Gary Barton. I saw where he landed, and that ball was probably about three inches behind the, behind the hole. Amazing shot. Congratulations, guys. Thank you all to our great sponsors that supported this event. It was such a fantastic event. Next up is the conversation that I had with Macy Wallenberg and Mark Hopkins with Land Care. I continue my series with our Cornerstone partners, and the topic is about instilling your company culture during, this, during these hard times. This was such a great conversation, and I really had a nice time hearing what Landcare does for their employees. So this is our conversation. Hey everyone, I am interviewing today Landcare, the team from Landcare, and it's Mark Hopkins, Regional Vice President, and Macy Wallenberg, Account Manager for Landcare. So hey guys, thank you guys for joining um, this conversation about cu culture and companies. Hi, excited awesome. to be here. Thanks, thanks. Good, good. Well, um, let's just get into it. So, um, Macy, how about you start us off? Tell us a little bit about yourself. How long have you been working with the company? What is it that you do? And how long have you been a BOMA member? Yeah, so I got started with Landcare after I graduated from Oklahoma State with my degree in landscape management, um, a short stint. After that, I have been there for three years since July, and I've been a BOMA member for almost three years as well. So I've been a BOMA member as long as we've been Cornerstone Partners. Um, I am an account manager, so I work on the client side of our business, customer relationships, and making sure that what needs to happen on the property does to make their landscapes look beautiful. And um, I do a little bit of recruiting as well and seeing that side of um, getting great people to join our team so we can better service more customers. Excellent. I love that you guys, you're doing the recruiting. That's kind of how Mark um, got you into, on, into Landcare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mark recruited me for multiple years um, and I turned him down for an internship and a job, but very excited. I haven't thought twice since I've been at Landcare, so it's been a good past three years and very, very busy. Excellent. Good. 
Mark, how about you? Tell us about yourself. Oh gosh, thanks. Um, yeah, I've, I've been with Landcare for uh, about six years now, and uh, been in the in the industry for gosh, my really my whole working career of over over 40, 45 years. Um, been involved with BOMA, uh, with, with Landcare, just like Macy, for the last uh, three years since we've been Cornerstone Partners. But um, over the years, I've been in, uh, involved with uh, Dallas BOMA uh, for a long, long time uh, with, with, with a different organizations. So probably all together, probably been involved with Dallas BOMA for, gosh, I'd say 18, 20 years. So uh um, and like Macy, I, I, you know, I spend a lot of time recruiting. Uh, I support our uh, teams in throughout Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Missouri. And a, a big part of what I do is really focus on on bringing great talent into our, our business like Macy uh, so that we can uh, continue to serve our customers. Well, good. Excellent. So, um, Macy, tell me how many people do you manage and um, and then well I'll leave the next question for Mark too. Okay um, so on an average day I usually manage 10 to 20 people um, at a time we have about 63 team members in our office total split between um, a handful of account managers and production managers that each person reports to so but average day 10 to 20 people. Excellent. Mark, how about you? How many do you have, in, and how many are in your entire company too? Well, you know, Macy probably oversees more folks than I do. I've got, <laughs> I think, about ten direct reports. So, you know, the business leaders roll up to me. Um, you know, all together uh, across our company, we uh, have a, probably about forty-five hundred employees. Wow, that's amazing. That's so great. So within all of that, all of those um, employees that you guys have, it's I'm sure it's it's interesting to to keep the culture within and to keep it um, keep everybody kind of on the same pace of you know instilling that culture in. So um, how how is it that the company? How do you guys instill your culture with your employees? I think it starts directly at the branch level. Um, we have five core values that we really um, insist on throughout the company that people live by. Um, my favorite one is work hard, smart, and safe every day. Um, as much as I love to make my customers happy, the most important thing to me is my team members getting home safe every day to their family. And so just really owning those values and um, that's where we kick off the day. And keep everybody safe um, and it just creates a better company and a better business. It seems very small, even though it's very large. Um, you know, everybody, my 63 people that are below me and the handful of people that are even with me and my branch manager above me is my everyday team. Um, we hear from Mark, we hear from the other branch managers in our region, but for the most part, we feel like we're our own little company and we're here to service Dallas East and Dallas West. Um, and keep all of those customers happy. And that's our core focus of our business that we see every day. Very good. I like that you say, because um, I, I think it's um, it's interesting to hear it on, on y'all's point of view about, you know, um, making sure that your team comes home safely. I think that's huge. I mean, obviously with labor and labor um, trade companies, like that is the number one, right? But, and so it's kind of a reminder um, I don't know for for myself to hear that and it's nice to hear that you guys do that's huge um and for you it's just the way you say it i love that i just think that's so cool sorry um so how do you communicate to your employees um is in how are you having these meetings and has it changed during the pandemic well, i can jump in there so you know the as with everybody, the pandemic has, has definitely changed uh, you know, our business. Um, you know, our field teams still get together you know, every every morning at, at each branch. You know, we practice uh, social distancing. We you know take everybody's temperature when they come in. We sanitize our trucks and equipment, and you know follow the, much the same protocol as, as probably anybody does in in any office. Uh, with our management team, we have a lot of team members that 
are actually, you know, we're working from home. So we utilize Zoom and, and uh, just try to keep that cadence to keep, uh, in, you know, team members engaged with each other. Uh, we try to, you know, recognize milestones, anniversaries, birthdays, you know, just to, and try to have fun in our business. Uh, and, you know, it's a, it's a lot harder than it was uh, you know, last year. But uh, we we were work really hard at it to keep you know to keep that culture and uh, and the camaraderie alive. Good. I think it's a lot. I think it's a lot of the little things too. Like Mark mentioned, birthdays and milestones. Everybody from Mark's level down, that's in his region, receives you know a personalized birthday card from him. Um, all the way down to the lowest paid person in the company, um, which is really awesome to for something like that to happen. You know, we do popsicles for the guys for social distancing um, so they can have a cool treat after a long, very hot Texas summer day, um, you know, have music on for them when they come into the shop. So as they're unloading debris from the trucks, getting mowers off trucks, you know, they can enjoy their time a little bit more and everyone's laughing versus just being exhausted from being out in the heat all day. Tell us about, even though, you know, this was before the pandemic, but do you mind sharing what you guys do in the beginning of your day? I thought that was really cool. Yeah, so every morning we, uh, um, before the pandemic, we start off at the shop at 6 a.m. All the team members are there and we go through a stretch and flex time. So it's only three to five minutes, but it is something for everybody to get their day started. And you don't realize I would travel, um, you know, a couple times a month before the pandemic. And you don't realize what missing a couple days of those stretches can do to your body. Um, <laughs> but it's just nice. Everybody's lined up in their teams um, that they're with all day. And, you know, you have a supervisor, like, you know, kind of the head honcho supervisor leading the stretches or production manager. Everyone's there, just morning camaraderie. And then we break out um, and head out for the day. And then the last thing they see is you guys too, whenever they come back. I love that. I think that's yep. so cool. I love that. Um, so how do you keep your employees engaged and keeping the eye, their eye on the goal? I'll let Mark take this one. He can talk about our training that they're putting in oh, control oh, now. Oh, yeah, we have, we, you know, we have training. I, I think so much of it starts with just, you know, transparency, really from the, the top of the business you know really all the way down to you know the person you know pulling weeds in a flower bed uh you know there's you know, there's constant communication um the, the business is very very open um you know no matter what's going on uh, our ceo has uh week or monthly town hall meetings with you know the entire organization and uh, you know now they're on video uh but uh talks about things that's going on in the business and so you know everybody has the opportunity to to hear and interact he you know, he provides his phone number and, and says, hey, call me, text me, and, and he'll answer the phone um, if anybody calls him. And so I think, you know, that's that's huge. Um, you know, really with the with the, the COVID, a lot of, you know, I think there's been some positive things come out of it. And that's, you know, learning how to, you know, how to interact with with teams remotely uh, through video and uh, we're, we're putting together, we we'll actually have a pilot program going right now that um, you know provides culture training to our field level team members we have it going in eight branches across the country and we'll have it rolled out across the entire business uh, in the first part of 2021 uh, so we're pretty excited about that but again it's just that uh, open dialogue with with all the team members that i think that's so helpful when you when you're staying transparent with your employees especially during times like this when it's you know uncertain times and um but and that's when it's important i feel like for transparent communication um i think that's so good so what is your most memorable proud moment um that your team has done mark you want to take that one first well sure um you know i think back to when we you know when we first um you know, started in the market. You know, a lot of us, a lot of our, our senior leadership had worked together for decades uh, at a different company. And when we came here, there was just, there was a lot of work to do. And and we had the opportunity to um, to be involved with a really large project, about a 60 acre project. And, 
we were successful and we we won um, the the bid with it. Um, I still don't, you know, I still can't believe they they chose us because we really didn't have any reference properties that were anywhere close to this. Very, very prestigious, very large, complex site. But we really just sold ourselves, and uh, you know the customer uh, took a chance, and uh, we made a commitment, you know, to to really over deliver for them. And so, well, this property was in really rough shape, and their expectations were that it was going to take quite a while to get it back to where they wanted to see it. Uh, but what we did on our end was we brought, you know, every resource that we had, you know, in the local business, every truck, every team member, you know, every mower that we had, and just, you know, blasted this property and just brought it back to where it needed to be in, in a very short period of time and and really just over delivered for the customer. And I think that really set the tone and kind of, you know, really changed the the trajectory of our business. That's really cool. I, I like that. I mean, it kind of, I listened to, to you say, talking about that, and I think about um, my boss, what she, she's an Ohio State Buckeye alum, and so, you know, their big thing is event plus response equals outcome, and, um, you know, depending on how you respond to an event is how the outcome will be, and it sounds like you guys did a positive, had a positive response to um, what was ahead of you, and turns out that it ended up being a positive outcome. So, I that's such a great, I like that. That's a great connection there for me to hear that for you guys. <laughs> Macy, how about you? Um, I'm just gonna build off of what Mark said. So that same customer is still. One of our favorite customers, they love us, we love them. They, it takes a lot to get to that point of a relationship where you can just trust each other with everything. They surprised me, they got with my branch manager, surprised me for my birthday a couple of years ago, like everyone was in the office and they got me a cake. Um, this does not happen very often for that, you know, property managers will text you happy birthday or something, but to have a whole team surprise you, um, they've come and spent the day at our office. They like came in for lunch and we showed them, they were like, we've been working with you for three years, but we have no idea what it looks like for you guys. And so they came in and kind of saw the operation side one morning. Um, and then one of our supervisors that we had for a while, he actually got hired on at the property as like a salary position. Um, so it was very exciting. Um, as sad as it is to lose somebody, it's very exciting to see someone that you care for really, you know, gets promoted in a really great way and pr can better provide for his family. He's um, just a regular hour type of day and the team loves him there. He fits in with them so well. So it's it's just exciting to see how that relationship has evolved over the years. Um, we pass out like 300 pumpkins there every October with those guys. And um, it's just nice to be part of a family with them. That's great. That's so good. I love hearing about great partnerships. Um, you know, that's one of the great things about well, I don't know if I can say it, but we can I can take it out if I want to. But um, with Crescent, you know, that's one of our biggest things is not just to being having great customer service to our customers, but also within the team and then to our our vendors as well. So it's so it's so nice to hear that, um, a com you know, that there are companies still doing that and um, really making a partnership with their with their vendors, too. So great. Well, thank you guys so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate y'all's, um, our partnership together with Boma Greater Dallas as a Cornerstone partner. And and Macy, you know, you've done a great job too in volunteering your time for our members as well. So thank y'all again. And thank you to Macy and Mark for taking the time to speak with me. I hope you all got to learn a little bit more about Landcare. Now on to our reminders. On October 13th, we will have the YP Trivia Night sponsored by Alpha Glass, Platinum Parking, and IDON Security Associates. Just a heads up, even before the games start, you're able to get three bonus points. All you have to do is subscribe to our YouTube channel, like this blog episode, and comment with hashtag BGDYPTrivia. We're all a little bit competitive, so bring it on, guys. 
Coming up on October 20th is our membership luncheon sponsored by Mooring Construction and Restoration. As we enter the early voting period, you can be, be prepared to listen to our Texas bum lobbyist, Robert Miller, and you'll see what he has to say about the political environment that we will be facing. With this event, we will have two options for you to choose from in order to be a part of this event. You may register to attend in person, um, which will be held at Eddie Dean's, or you can register to watch it virtually. It'll be our hybrid style, and we're just giving it a shot to see how it goes. So be sure to register today. If you're in the process of obtaining your BOMI designation or professional development through BOMA, or even just going to college or trade school, trade school program, you may want to apply for one of our fall scholarships. The application period is open and it closes at the end of October. Head to BOMADallas.org for more information. And one last item, our Lone Star Awards nominating period is open now. For those not familiar with the Lone Star Awards, these are Belma Greater Dallas' awards that are awarded to the best of the best. These are people in our industry who have demonstrated the highest level of professionalism and who have just gone over and beyond their everyday tasks. I believe that every one of us has shown that during this COVID time. So go to the website, fill out the form to make your nomination. That's all the reminders I have for you guys for now. On a personal note, I want to remind you guys that this Saturday is the Preakness Stakes. And I inadvertently wore the colors, the Black Eyed Susan colors. And you guys know, or if you know me very well, this is the Lang family holiday, which is another story for another episode. So thank you guys for watching this episode of Boma Greater Dallas Unplugged. Stay safe, stay strong, keep up the good work. Thanks.